He is talking about the Brahmanical society, the dominance, the upper class, yes, the elite class. Muslim lunatics in India should be transferred to Pakistan and Hindu and Sikh lunatics in Pakistan asylums should be sent to India now. Muhammad Ali Jinnah. He was a big shot then, a famous figure. And few people knew that it's because of Muhammad Ali Jinnah that they are demanding for a separate country. Hello, hi, namaste and welcome to Vidyashram First Grade College, the Temple of Excellence. I am Nanda Kishore, Faculty of English in Vidyashram, Mysore. In today's session, I am going to discuss one of the pros prescribed to first semester BA and BCA Mysuru University. The prose is titled as Toba Tek Seng, written by Sadat Manto. Basically, born in India, but he belongs to Pakistan. Let us start with today's session. Something about author, his full name is Sadat Hassan Manto. He was born on 11 May 1912 in Ludhiana, Punjab and he died in 18 January 1955. He lived for a very short term. He was a colonial Indian and Pakistani writer, playwright and author born in Ludhiana, India. He was ethnically a Kashmiri and proud of Kashmiri roots. Now let us see a bit of background about this prose. What is this background? In 1947, India got independence. And if you have read the poem called Partition, written by W. H. Auden, he says that during this partition, I'm talking about the background of this prose, Soon after 1947, soon after India got independence, Muhammad Ali Jinnah, he demanded that he and his community people wanted a separate country. You should know one thing, in 1945, Muslim League, aided by Muhammad Ali Jinnah, gets a majority votes and the demand they want Right back then, 1945, soon after the end of Second World War, they demanded, they, in a sense, Muslims, they wanted a separate country. And in this poem, it talks about, it is clearly told by W.H. Auden, that a lawyer from London named Cyril Ratcliffe, He comes down to India for the first time and he was the responsible person for dividing two nations, India and Pakistan. He drew the line between two nations based on what? How did he divide? On what basis did he divide the two nations? Only with basis of outdated census and maps just on this basis he divided bifurcated two nations which was one before it was called hindustan india pakistan present pakistan was a part of hindustan india before the partition in 1947 soon after 1945 they had demanded and Cyril Ratcliffe, he drew the line. The data was outdated. The census was outdated. The maps were outdated. And he locked himself in the room. And there were police to patrol to make sure that nobody would come and kill or assassinate Cyril Ratcliffe. And he drew the line just within a week or maybe a month, that's all, five to seven weeks 
and he left to England once and for all. And what followed after and the consequence was severe. There was a bloodshed. You should understand the trauma of the people because many Hindus and Sikh, they were just spread across the present Pakistan. But after learning that they, Hindus and Sikh people, Sikh community people, they were in Pakistan, they, they had to come back to India. And after Muslims learning that they are in Hindustan, they are in India now, they had to move to Pakistan. There is sort of an interchange of people, exchange of people with mutual consent or forcefully exchanged, chased away, massacred. You should understand the mental trauma that they underwent. That trauma is being depicted in this prose now. Here is one such story where author is trying to net, author is trying to cook up a story or author is trying to depict his feelings and the trauma, the difficulties the people faced back then. Let us see the prose now. He says, a couple of years after the partition of the country, it occurred to the respective government, respective government, both Pakistan and India, government of India and Pakistan, that inmates of lunatic asylums, lunatic mad people, an asylum is where people are, mental people are treated, taken care of, or it could also be a refuge place, refugee place where people are given refuge. And he says inmates, where there are inmates in Pakistan and India, right? There are, pa there are Pakistanis in Indian asylums and there are Indians in Pakistani asylums. And he says they are going to exchange and they say India and Pakistan that inmates of lunatic asylums like prisoners should also be exchanged. Asylum is sort of like prison now. Prisoners are also there. Asylum as I told you mental people they are taken care of and refuge. And there are prisoners as well. Even prisoners need to be exchanged. Remember it is not so easy to exchange prisoners the way you exchange the civilians. No. Prisoners, there are certain terms and rules and regulations that you have to sign memorandum. You have to sign that agreement with mutual consent of both the countries. They are going to exchange the prisoners now. And Muslim lunatics in India. Now he comes to the point. Muslim Lunatics in India should be transferred to Pakistan and Hindu and Sikh lunatics in Pakistan asylums should be sent to India now. He says there are prisoners, there are lunatics. Try to observe mad people, lunatic, mentally imbalanced. Both of these lunatics Muslims and Hindus and Sikhs should be exchanged and he says they should be sent to India to their respective countries from India to Pakistan and from Pakistan to India and then he says whether this was a reasonable or an unreasonable idea is difficult to say he says what would people do? What would people know? The mentally imbalanced person, what would he know whether he is in India or Pakistan? And these people are exchanging, remember, when they say, when the author writes, lunatic. This is very important. It is mentally imbalanced. And he says, lunatic, there should be, the priority should be, taking care of them, trying to get them to the normal mentality. They are not doing this. Here, priority is religion. 
caste, community. If you are sick, it doesn't matter where you are. The priority of the mankind should be you should become normal. Wherein as you see this, lunatic people also should be exchanged. They should be sent to their respective countries based on what terms? Based on religion. Based on caste. Look at the terms used here. And he says that is the reason whether it is reasonable or unreasonable, whether it is logical or illogical, it doesn't matter. I don't know. But it's difficult to say. One thing, however, is clear. Now he says, one thing is for sure. It is clear. It took many conferences of important officials from two sides to come to this decision. As I told you in the poem Partition, the poet writes, on what basis did Cyril Radcliffe drew the line? On the basis of expired, outdated senses and maps. And to decide the fate of two nations, Cyril Radcliffe had only two Hindus and two Muslims. That's all. They represented two nations. They were the representatives of two nations. And it says, it takes, it has taken too many conferences, official meetings of important officials. But definitely after meeting twice or thrice or as many times, they have come to the conclusion. They have come to this conclusion. Now he is emphasizing, he is saying that whatever decision they have made, they have made it after several meetings. So it is very important. They didn't take this decision. They didn't make this decision all at once and once and for all. No. They didn't do it. They were not blindfolded. They were not dumb and deaf. Final details like the date of actual exchange. Now, after a couple of years, so 1947 was the year we got independence and maybe after 1949 or 1950, they come to this conclusion and the dates were fixed in order to exchange the prisoners or the lunatics in asylums. The date of actual exchange were carefully worked out, carefully worked out, so you are going to fix a date. And only on that particular day, we are going to exchange the people. Muslim lunatics whose families, this is very important. Muslim lunatics whose families were still residing in India were to be left undisturbed. Remember, on what basis did they migrate these people or exchange these people on the basis of religion or caste? And they say, but Muslim lunatics... We are not talking about their families. Muslim lunatics whose families, if the families are residing in India, then this Muslim lunatics would not be disturbed. They would not be sent to Pakistan. If the families are in Pakistan already, if this Muslim people who are in asylum, if their families are in Pakistan, then it meant that this lunatics should, they should also be sent to Pakistan. The rest moved to border for the exchange. The rest, the remaining moved to the border for the exchange. Now, this profound observation was received with visible satisfaction, intense observation. Now, people of both these countries, they are like wondering what is happening with us. Why is it happening? Our fellow beings who were part of our country, they are migrating. Are we going to meet them ever again? There are a lot of questions, a lot of things lingering in their mind. 
And who is going to answer this? No one. It's just the fate of millions of people which was pre-written, which was decided by just few handful of people. This observation was received with visible satisfaction and a sick lunatic asked another sick. Now he says, there is a sick lunatic, a mad person, asked another sick, Sardarji, why are we being sent to India? We don't even know the language they speak in that country. Saying who? Sick. You might be wondering what is wrong. Sick or the single people who belong to India, proud Punjab. But they are claiming that they are not able to speak the language they speak in Hindustan or India. Why? Because they were almost towards the borders of Pakistan. Remember, they were almost in Pakistan, but now they have to come back to India. This is a situation in present Pakistan now, which had taken place then. And he says, we don't know the language. So why are we going to that country? The man smiled. Now the other man smiles and tells, I know the language of Indostoras. He says, Indostoras. These devils, he calls, these devils always strut. Strut, being proud, so sort of a show off. Always strut about as if they were the lords of the earth. He's talking about the Brahminical society, the dominance, the upper class. Yes, the elite class. And it is believed during back then, it was Sanskrit, which was the language preferred, language taught to others and the language where it was a sort of medium of communication. And one who knew Sanskrit was supposed to be a higher class person. Now he says, I don't know why they do this. The sick man is telling, I know the language. Even I know, maybe Hindi or Sanskrit, a sort of mix of both. This is the situation there. And then it moves on. One day, a Muslim lunatic. Now, there is a shift. See here, there is a shift. Sudden shift from one topic to the other topic. One day, a Muslim lunatic, while taking his bath, this is very important, while taking his bath, raised the slogan, Pakistan Zindabad, with much enthusiasm, that he lost his footing and was later found lying on the floor unconscious. These are the pictures maybe Sadat Manto, he himself saw or he might have heard somebody saying it. But I believe these are the pictures that he had picturized, he had seen from his eyes and he wants to experience the same from the readers. He wants the readers to experience the same here. So, there is a sudden shift of pictures, context, situation. And this Muslim lunatic, he is not afraid of scolding or using the words straight away, targeting and attacking both the religion. Why? Because this could be the outcome of his own pain. Remember, he was in Bombay basically, though born in India, Punjab, right? He was there in Bombay during this heated situation and he was forced to move to Pakistan. So maybe out of those feelings of frustration or emotions, he had penned down his experience or what he had seen. And he says, this Muslim was so much pumped up. And he says, Muslim, lunatic, Sikh, lunatic, Hindu, lunatic. And he says, he was so much pumped up that he raised the slogan, Pakistan, Zindabad, long live Pakistan. And it was so intense, he lost his footing. He's lost his balance. 
and he fell down in such a way that he was unconscious. It might seem very simple, but you should understand why it is very important. That is the intensity, the level of intensity is so high, so much, people started losing their own self. There is no self-control here. Then says, not all inmates were mad. He says, not all inmates were mad. This is very important. He says, it's a sarcastic way. Some were perfectly normal. Not mad. Now he says, they are perfectly normal, except that they were murderous. He says, except that they were murderous. To spare them, the hangman's noose, noose is a knot where uh, a person will be hanged, right? A hangman's noose, this is a noose where they will be hanging. To spare, to avoid them, the hangman's noose, their families had managed to get them committed after bribing officials down the line. So what does it mean? Imagine there are park mad people, lunatics in India now, in asylum. Yes, and there are Indian mad people, lunatics in Pakistani asylum. And if few people happen to become murderers here in Pakistan and here in India, they are murderers, yes, they cannot be exchanged and sent to Pakistan so easily because they are murderers, they should be punished, they should be hanged. There are set of rules. In order to send these murderers, Indian murderers back to India from Pakistan, they have to do the same rules, they have to get, to, get through the same rules. Now, in order to escape their death sentence, what are they doing here? Both the countries or both the mad people's family members, they are bribing it. Yes? They are bribing who? Officials. So that they would escape to either of the countries. They probably had a vague idea Yes, empty, like absurd, not clear idea. Who? The people, maybe. They probably had a vague idea why India was being divided. And what Pakistan was, this is very tricky. Why India is divided? Now, remember, the present Pakistan was just a part of India back then, before independence. The people, they had a... Very observed, not clear idea why India was being divided and what Pakistan was. But as for the present situation, they were equally clueless, both Muslims and Hindus. Next, newspapers were no help either. Newspapers were not helping either of the people, none of the people actually, none of them. And the asylum guards were ignorant. Ignorant? They were not in a condition to tell the mad people there why they are being exchanged, why they are being removed from Indian asylum and sent to Pakistani asylum. If not illiterate. So if somebody was published in newspaper, they were not in a condition to read and interpret or tell the people there. Nor was there anything to be learned by eavesdropping. Eavesdropping is like where you listen to from the talking of other people, eavesdropping on their conversations. They have no idea. They are completely clueless. Some said there was this man by the name Muhammad Ali Jinnah or Qaid E. Azam. Governor General. So few people knew it was because of Muhammad Ali Jinnah, yes, who had set up a separate country for Muslims called Pakistan. The first Governor General here, 
yes and he had a good term with few officials and he had declared that they wanted separate nation and that is why people are a bit aware they are a bit aware about Muhammad Ali Jinnah he was a big shot then a famous figure and few people knew that it's because of Muhammad Ali Jinnah that they are demanding for a separate country let us see what happens next as to where Pakistan was located the inmates knew nothing now they are wondering where is this Pakistan they had no idea that was why both the man and the partially mad were unable to decide whether they were now in pa India or in Pakistan. Now, they are wondering whether they are now in India or Pakistan. Imagine that we are all in a state called Karnataka, right? And uh, Indians would know, majority of the Indians would know where Karnataka lies and it is one of the southern states. And let us say, all of a sudden, one fine day, you get up and the next morning, people call this state Karnataka with different name. The name which is not familiar, which is invented newly. What would people know where it is located? The same mentality, the same perspective here. It is the confusion, the perplexed. They are like... Pakistan, where is it? Where is it on the map? Maybe they are residing in Pakistan. Or maybe they are in somewhere between the border of Pakistan and India. And they don't know whether to call it India or Pakistan. But one thing is for sure, they don't know the news nation called Pakistan. But I am sure they knew where India is. And then it continues. If they were in India, now, it's a, it's a doubtful notion. If they were in India, where on earth was Pakistan? Now, this is the confusion. As I told you, the example. And if they were in Pakistan, if they were in Pakistan, now, he is saying, if they were in Pakistan, then how come that until only the other day it was India? Remember, this sentence is a bit tricky. Now, if you call India as Pakistan, yes, because Pakistan was a part of India. If you call India as Pakistan, then where is India? And it is rhetorical question. If you say Pakistan is a different nation, then how come we are still in India? Where on earth was Pakistan then? A bit confusion here, right? And then it moves on. One inmate had got to badly caught up in this India-Pakistan, Pakistan-India rigmarole that one day while sweeping the floor, he dropped everything. Now he is in a confusion state, long confusion, complicated state. And he says, one day while sweeping the floor, he is sweeping and he dropped everything. Maybe the mob, the stake, the bucket, the everything he dropped, climbed the nearest tree and installed himself on a branch from which vantage point he spoke for two hours on the delicate problem of India and Pakistan. Try to understand the mentality of the people back then. Imagine you are living or you are residing in a state or let, let me just come down to one city, whichever city you are residing in and people say, no, 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 you, did, you don't belong. You didn't belong to this corporation. You belong to other corporation. Try to imagine the pain of making the new documents because you are the permanent resident of that area of this corporation. Let us imagine that we are in Mysore Corporation. Yes, and we have all the documents done in one residence. Somebody comes and tells you, 
an official. No, 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 no. The people who are residing in this city, this corporation, they belong to that corporation, some other corporation. And can you just understand the plight of that making of this documents, voting ID, Aadhaar card? Can you just understand it? Imagine it is happening in the greater level and it says he dropped everything. It was like, oh, I am fed up of it. India, Pakistan, Pakistan, India, where am I now? So he was dumbstruck and he just climbs up and he sits there and spoke for two hours on the delicate problem. Now see, the delicate problem of India and Pakistan. The guards asked him to get down. There are guards, remember. They're warning him, get down you fool. Instead, he went a branch higher. Now he's saying, my God, no. I am not going to get down. And when threatened with punishment, he declares, declared, I wish to live neither in India and Pakistan. I wish to live in this tree. So fed up, it is so funny and so frustrated, out of frustration, that mad fellow says, you people are telling that I belong to India, they belong to Pakistan. Where is this India and Pakistan? What is happening here? And I'm not sure where I will be pushed, whether I belong to India or Pakistan. I don't know. So what I'm going to do is, I'm neither going to live in India nor Pakistan. I'm going to live in this, this tree. I'm not going to live in this country. I'm going to live on top of this tree. So let us see in the next session what this lunatic will say and do. Until then, keep practicing, keep reading. We'll meet you in the next session. Have a good day. Take care.